it's Shadow again, and today we're going to be creating a Minecraft server and a Minecraft mod. So, you might not know what Minecraft is. Uh, if you do, that's awesome. If you don't, ask any kid around you. Just to give you an idea of what Minecraft is, it's a 3D world where you do exactly what the title says. You mine for items, and then you craft uh, buildings and structures using those items you mine. So one really interesting thing about Minecraft is the whole game was written in Java. So another feature with Minecraft is uh, it allows the creation of mods. Basically, mods are modifications to the original gameplay. So these make the game much more fun and they let you create more interesting structures. And since a Minecraft was written in Java, we can use Scala to write Minecraft mods since Scala works with Java libraries. So in this, uh, we're going to be using Bucket, which is a tool for creating mods. And in this video, we're going to create a basic um, Bucket server, and we're also going to create a default Bucket mod to go with it. So let's get started. So I have the instructions on, move this down to the side for now. So I have the instructions on how to uh, create uh, your first server online. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory. So I'm going to mkdir scala server. Let me go to scala server. And now what I need to do is I need to follow these instructions. So first I'm going to download the setup server file. Okay. I need to now give it execution permissions. Okay. And now I need to execute setup server.sh. So this will take some amount of time. It'll take probably about one to two minutes. And um, I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so it finished downloading the files. So what what files were these? Well, these were the Scala library files. Also, it was the bucket Scala library that I've written, and um, also the run server file. So now what we need to do is first we need to generate a few more files that bucket's going to use, and to that do that we're going to do run dash server dot sh. So this is going to launch the server. gonna prepare the spawn area okay so it's done so we can close the server and now we can see that we have some more files than we used to now we have the server.log server.properties and we're actually going to be modifying server.properties so I'm going to open it in sublime text server property okay so now we need to open why isn't it open? okay now I have it so what I'm gonna do is I have my uh, the things we're gonna change is first of all we need to change the game mode and we want creative mode and also we need to change the online mode to false so this goes into offline mode so what is offline mode well, it's a really common tool when you're developing mods, and what it does is, in Minecraft, there's also an offline mode, which, what it does is, instead of you uh, be, uh, go entering the server using the username in your Minecraft account, you can go with any username. So, this helps when I want multiple players, and I don't have, then I don't have to create lots of different accounts, I can just run Minecraft a bunch of different times. So now I change that. Let me save. And now we can run on my server again. Now we can go to Minecraft. Okay, so it's done. Now we can see I have local server and the IP is localhost. So I can join. Okay, so I'm in Minecraft. Yay! And now let's start creating our mod, okay? So I'm going to first close the server. 
Okay, and now we're going to create our mod. So let me go back. And I'm going to use the uh, Gitterate template that I made. And what it does is it includes some libraries that you need for creating the mods. And also comes with the default uh, mod, which is the one we're going to use. So to use Gitter the Gitterate template, I, I need to use G8, shut edge, slash, Scala, dash, Minecraft, dot g8 and run and I'm just going to be using the defaults okay now I can go to Scala plugin and what we need to do is we need to package this so I'm going to run spt package Okay, so it's compiling now. Okay, that's just a warning because the package for me.shutage is the same. Okay, so now we've finished packaging and now we need to copy it into the plugins folder off, this, off our server to add that as a mod. So I'm going to do cp scala plugin slash target slash scala 210 slash scala plugin to scala server server slash plugins okay now if you go to our scala server and ls our plugins we see that it's there okay so now we can run our server and what's this mod going to do? I haven't told you that. So what it's going to do is, it's a really simple mod. Uh, what it does is, whenever the user places a block, it'll give the name of the block and the XYZ coordinates. So it'll give some basic information about the block. So let's run our server. Okay, so we can see here it loaded. So that means it's running. And it enabled it too. That's good. Happened to Minecraft. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'll get back to you once I figured out why Minecraft crashed. Okay, so we're back. So for some reason, I quit Minecraft by mistake, but I'm back. And now I can go to multiplayer, go to local server, join the server. Okay, so running around in my beautiful minecraft world and uh, let me drop down first real quick and what i'm going to do is first i'm going to go to my palette and give myself some stone and now when i place stone it gives me that information you placed a stone at 2569309 so wherever i place it'll always give me information so that's our mod what we're going to be doing next time is we're going to take this basic, uh, the basic template and we're going to edit the actual file. I'll show you the, uh, the code in a bit. And what we're going to do is, uh, since we can uh, change it around, and we're going to make a more complex mod. So before I go, let me show you uh, the code. So let me go to sub L, Scala plugin. Okay, so let me show you the code. Okay, so what we're what you can see we're doing here is, uh, I have a function which takes an event of type block place event, and what it does is it gets the player and the block, and what I do is I just send the player a message based on, uh, and I give the block types and the x, y, and z. Okay, and what I do in the end is I register this as an event so whenever a block is placed it'll call this code so that's going to be our mod and i'll see you next time when we create a much more complex mod but first i need to play some minecraft see ya